Welcome back to Awakening Reformation Podcast, where Reformation awakens now. My name is Grant, and join with me, as always, is The Weaker Vessel. Hello, everyone. If you would like to find more of Awakening Reformation Podcast, we are on iTunes and Podcast Catchers. Please subscribe, rate, and review us. You can also find us on Facebook, like our page, share, and like our content there. You can follow us on Instagram and Twitter. The Twitter handle is at Awaken Reform Pod, and you can email us, awakeningreformation at gmail.com. We really appreciate any engagement with listeners. This week, we had some new likes and reviews. We had one new like and one new review from Trevor Stead. Thanks, Trevor. Thanks a million, Trevor. Thanks a million. Could you read, do you want to read his review? Sure. Give me a second. Really appreciate new reviews. Trevor is the bomb because he yeah. liked us and reviewed us. Okay. So it Setting says, the standard. That's right. Heard Erica on Rebel Alliance. Woo woo. Love Rebels. Love the interview and subscribed here. I was not disappointed. Great cast, solid theology, enjoyable conversation slash teaching. You are too kind, Trevor. We'll pay you later. <laughs> Thanks, Trevor. Really appreciate it. So tonight, Erica and I wanted to talk about catechizing our children, catechizing our kids. That is going through a catechism with your kids. Yes. Now, before even recent years, I would have said, Cata what? Some people maybe don't know what a catechism is or what the purpose of one is. And I certainly didn't until I was an adult just because of my church upbringing. But a catechism is just... A uh, church's way of organizing questions and answers about Christian doctrine. Mm-hmm. They usually start very basic with what the scriptures are, and then they go through with who God is, and then on and on through a whole bunch of biblical doctrine. Yep, it's a call and response. Yeah, so it's just questions and answers. But it's super helpful, especially for kids, but even for adults too, Yep, to learn doctrines and basic truths of the Bible. Right, so if you teach children young... Um, like biblical truths, when they're older, it will be much easier for them to understand certain doctrines and certain things. And one thing that I thought when we first started catechizing our kids was that there's no way our kids are going to even understand what they're talking about. Mm-hmm. And they didn't when they were babies. They had no idea what they were even saying. But as they're getting older, we've really start, started to see how those little seeds that we planted when they were young mm-hmm. are now starting to blossom and they're understanding more. And they understand doctrines that most adults don't understand, honestly. So (laughs) it's never too young to start catechizing your kids. Well, and how awesome would it be for your kid to grow up always just knowing... The chief end of man. The chief end of man. And to always knowing... Like, they never never knew anything else. They just grew up knowing God's word and being taught it. I'd rather them have no memory of uh, a time when I wasn't doing Bible study with them. So for those of you who don't have kids... Or maybe who have kids that are grown and out of the house and you think, all right, well, I'm going to push stop on this podcast because this does not apply to me in my life at all. First of all, I'm going to say, statistically speaking, you will have children someday. Mm -hmm. Also, if you already do have children that are grown and out of the house, then statistically speaking, you will have grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And for those of you who are single and maybe are given the gift of singleness and will never have children... You're still called to disciple. So if you are involved in the church and discipling like the Bible would beckon you to do, then then learn how to catechize the people you're discipling, whether they're children or maybe new believers or anyone. It's very helpful. And you have some great advice to your friends who are married and have kids. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I listened to this one podcast one time and they said to do. Right. So this can be helpful in a number of ways. Yep. So keep listening. Yeah, keep us on. Don't skip. Don't skip next. <laughs> um, you could probably speed us up a little bit, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm guilty of that on podcasts. So one of the first questions, especially if catechizing is not familiar, is people are going to ask why. It's going to be like, what? What is? Why would I? Why would I do this? So yeah, we already kind of explained to you what a catechism is. It's a call and response, Mm -hmm. teaching doctrine to your children. You ask a question, your child answers. Should memorize too. Right. Yeah. And then the why is... So in Deuteronomy 6, verse 7, God told the people of Israel to teach them, meaning God's law, diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in the house when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise. I remember reading this before we were married, before we were dating even, and thinking, 
ah, that's going to be so awesome with my kids. Like, I want to just talk God and theology with them all day long, all the time. I'm so glad this is commanded. It was like my hobby anyway. I was super excited and was excited to um, have kids and to be able to do this with them. Maybe if someone is saying, oh, that's just in the Old Testament, what would you say to someone who says that? Oh, that's Deuteronomy, that's Mosaic Covenant. Maybe, maybe, maybe that doesn't apply? Well, I'd be like... I believe in covenant theology, so... Boom. <laughs> so I believe the Old Testament has a lot to do with my life and how I believe my faith to pertain to... Raising children hasn't yeah, I mean, changed. everything, yeah. But but also, Paul says in Second Timothy that Timothy was catechized, mm-hmm. that he was brought up with the traditions and the instructions. Okay, what was it, Second. Second Timothy 3.15. Yeah. It says, in how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. So the traditions and the sacred writings that Timothy had been taught from childhood mm-hmm. were things that were able to make him wise for salvation through his faith in Jesus Christ. So this is basically the reason why we catechize our kids, because if we're able to teach these sacred writings to our children, those teachings, that catechism is able to make them wise for salvation. We are commanded to raise up our kids to know the Lord. Right. We are not commanded to raise our kids to know the Lord and Baal and Malek. Right. So a lot of people raise their kids to, well, I want them to choose for themselves and to where they can learn about other religions later down the road. But in their formative years, you're commanded to train them up and to teach them to know God, to know Yahweh, to know the Lord. Yep. So that's what we're supposed to do. Some people will call it indoctrination. And yeah, that's pretty (laughs) much exactly what it is. I just don't, what Christian would be like, oh, we shouldn't do that. That's the greatest thing ever. And, And Paul says right there, Timothy, like it was what made you wise to salvation. Like how else is your kid gonna grow up and embrace Christ as their Savior right. and to put their faith if they're not... Taught doctrine. Taught doctrine. Taught who God is in mm-hmm. His ways. Right. So... Exactly. So, as far as which catechism to use? Well, for kids, a very great intro one is called New City Catechism. Mm-hmm. They have an app. You can buy the book, but they have a free app. And there are songs, too. The mm-hmm. first songs they ever published with the catechism were the best ever. The newer ones are a little more cheesy. But it's very basic, and there's prayers and other things that kind of help you use the catechism yep. in family devotional time. We use the Westminster Shorter Catechism now. The kids are a little bit older, so yep. they can um, memorize a little bit more. And you can, I mean, there's apps. Go to your app store and just yeah. look up Westminster Catechism, and it'll pop up. It's free. You download it, and you just go. You can skip through question mm-hmm. by question by question, and that's what we've done with our kids. We've just gone from question one on. We don't move on until our kids memorize yeah. that said question. We don't teach them ten at a time. We teach them the very first question, and they memorize that one. And then mm-hmm. once they got that down, then we go on to the next, and mm-hmm. so on and so forth. So it will take us, our children's entire childhood, for us to get through West, the Westminster Shorter Catechism yeah. and have them all memorized. And for us, too. Yeah. I don't have them all memorized. No, definitely not. I was not taught that. Uh, Yeah, me either. I've seen that other book called, I think it's called My First Catechism. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of just another little book that's geared towards kids and doing catechism with small children. Right. And for our Baptist friends, there is the London Baptist Confession. Yeah, and there is a catechism that that is built off that. I don't know what it's called, though. So... What about the Heidelberg? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, there's there's a lot of different ones. The Westminster has withstood the test of time very well. Same with the Heidelberg. New City Catechism kind of pulls from all of them. Mm-hmm. They used all of the good ones and kind of melded them together. You get uh, kind of a mixed bag with that one, so... Yep. But those are all good. Doing this with your kids may seem a little daunting. You may think... They're not going to sit down and listen to me read off these questions and uh, it's going to be so foreign to them. And maybe when you are starting, it will be hard to get them to sit down or whatever. And some days, all cards on the table are harder than others. Yeah. No, definitely. That's like one of the biggest myths about family integrated worship of any kind. (laughs) It's like at home or at church. Yeah, it's not always like children sitting peaceably on the floor. Well, teach they, me, Father. Yeah, that doesn't show happen. me God's truth, Mother. Sometimes it is yeah. similar to that, and That's they get true. really into it. And sometimes it's like, 
How is there a child literally scaling the wall right now? Right. <laughs> that has some... Maybe we should pray over it. Yes, let's pray over the child. Where's the holy water? <laughs> Um, yeah, so the first tip is uh, when doing this with your kids, make it clear to really help your kids by breaking it down. All three of your points are going to start with C, aren't they? Maybe. So first one, first point. That's so Baptist. Make it clear. No, everyone does it. Oh, I think it's kind of Baptist. Oh, well, they're trying to own it, but I think everyone does. <laughs> the three C's of catechizing your child. <laughs> Even catechism starts with C. You're so brilliant. Wow. I didn't even try to do that on purpose. So point number one, make it clear. Make it clear. So maybe uh, your kids don't understand all the words you're saying. You got to break it down, Mm -hmm. as some would say, Barney style. So just the very first, for instance, would be the Westminster Shorter Catechism Mm -hmm. question would be, what is man's chief end, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're teaching this to a three-year-old and you say, okay, you know, what is man's chief end? They're going to look at you and be like, I don't know. And I don't know what you're asking me even. (laughs) Yeah. So you have to be like, why did God create you? You know, what was God's plan when he made you? Mm-hmm. What What does God want from you? You have to break it down yeah. in terms they can understand and comprehend. And with the question, or the answer rather being, man's chief end is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Right. So you break down each part of that sentence. Right. Yeah. You know, just in their own words, teach it to them mm-hmm. in the proper form. Teach right. it to them to, to respond to the question with the words that are recorded, but show them what that means yeah talk about what it means to glorify god to be like him and to obey him and then to enjoy him that obeying him brings joy right what god gives should make us happy and that we're thankful for what he's given us i think one of the biggest mistakes that we do with our children when we have them memorize scripture or anything even in schooling my children Mm -hmm. if they don't understand what it is they're memorizing they're not going to retain it if they understand what it is that they're memorizing, their retainability is much higher. Yeah. And I mean, there's still benefit in just memorizing. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Because right. at some point at 10, 11 years old, they're going to understand. And yeah, deeper truths will click. Exactly. But you still want it to seep into their hearts, even mm-hmm. as little kids, if it can. And it's... kids surprise you. Sometimes they can understand more than you think, too. Yep. I've been surprised by our kids sometimes. Children tend to meet the bar that you have set out for them, you know? Yeah. Well, and that's why there's no age to, like, start this at. It just right. do it as early as possible. Yep. Obviously, your expectations are a little bit lower if they're two, two and a half and can barely talk. But at least you doing Bible study with them becomes a norm. Well, and that's when, if they're that little, if they're, they really can't even talk very well yet, I would say find the New City Catechism, mm-hmm. put it on to where it's on and they can hear the songs. Because mm-hmm. at that age... Even if they don't understand any of it, them just learning a song is going to be helpful for when they do start understanding how to communicate and what words mean and all that kind of stuff. Honestly, if your kids can memorize, like, Disney Junior theme songs, your kid can memorize a catechism. Fire. (laughs) I just can't can't even add to that. Now, as a parent, it may feel daunting um, to be teaching your kids all this stuff, and you may be thinking, I don't even know all this, so what the heck? Mm Mm-hmm. I will say Google is your friend. And there are apps like Blue Letter Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, if if the question is talking about how Christ is a prophet, then just quick look up what is a prophet in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Um, Find a story of one of the prophets and read about them. This was one of God's prophets and this is how Christ was a prophet. Right. Just quick Google that stuff and tell it to your kids in one minute, two minutes, and then move on. I mean, you learn as you're teaching them and they're learning. I mean, your five-year-old doesn't need a, you know, complete description of all of the functionality of a a prophet. They just need to understand, oh, this was a prophet in the Bible, and this is how Jesus is better than that prophet. Right. Jesus fulfills that role as a prophet. Right. Kids get that kind of stuff. So what's your next point? The next one is make it a cadence. Again, starts with a C. Because you're in the army. (laughs) Well, that's true. But even that helps you memorize stuff. Yep. 